The pandemic made QR codes extremely popular. There was a new digital shift to people with ease scanning these QR codes. I made probably 100 to 150 different types of QR code content for a lot of my clients during the pandemic. The problem with these QR codes is that as easy as it is to scan them, it's also extremely easy for scammers to use QR codes to scam their victims. Scams with regards to QR codes, which are referred to as quishing, which is a type of phishing attack, is the most rapidly growing type of phishing attack that's occurring right now. And this is really, really important because scammers and hackers are leveraging QR code popularity to trick you and make you a victim. It is so easy to make something like this and to put a brand that people trust. And then what these scammers are doing is they're hanging it up on your favorite restaurant or favorite store and they're simply affixing it to the window. They're leaving it underneath your windshield wipers and people tend to trust, especially if you make the QR code designs nice and fancy and you give a really appealing discount. You say something like, hey, scan this and you'll get 50% off the next Nikes, right? and I could go to the city and I could paste this on the Nike store itself. People don't really know the difference. They'll go, they'll scan it, and then it will bring them to some login screen that's gonna steal their information, or it's gonna navigate them so that they can go and download some sort of malware onto the device, some sort of spyware. Now, why do hackers do this? What can they gain by you clicking on one of these QR codes that's malicious, that's simply made by them to make you a victim well they can go ahead and they can download malicious software onto your phone they're trying to steal your personal information identity theft they could go and try to steal your crypto try to steal your money from your bank account they could go and blackmail you they can get certain information and try to literally ask you for money or else right and so these things are really scary again it's referred to as quishing nowadays and I'm going to show you a few ways that you can be mindful of it and also not fall prey to the scam that's really easy to get tricked into. Let's start off with me showing you how easy it is to create one of these scams, how easy it is to generate these QR codes and that there really is no system in place to say, oh, no, this is a malicious link or this is a scam. You can't make a QR code out of it. So let me show you right now. So to show you exactly how easy it is to create these QR codes, you can simply type in QR code generator into Google and you'll see that there's a whole plethora of options of where to generate your QR codes. We'll just click on this right here, qr-code-generator.com, and all we have to do is enter a website. Now, these platforms, they don't check. It could be an absolute scam website, but in my case, I will link it to the Promo Ambitions Artificial Intelligence page right here, and what I'll do is I'll copy this link, and all I have to do is put it in into this website link right here. And you'll see that in seconds it generates this QR code which comes embedded with this URL at a fixed destination because it's a static QR code, which means it can't be changed. It will always open up this link right here. However, there are dynamic QR codes where you can create a QR code, but then in your own interface on the platform, as the creator, you can then change the URL that this QR code leads to. This is important because it could potentially make the QR code susceptible to an attack if the hacker is able to log into the platform where I have my dynamic QR codes saved, they can then change the URL to a scam website that's gonna download malicious software on my device. Now, I wanna point out that with these QR codes, what I can do is simply design a really nice postcard. Now, some of these are my clients, Glenrock Chiropractic Center, shout out Dr. Sheminsky, this is Charles Renovations, shout out Angel, and River Point Wellness Group is another client, 
client. Now, something to keep in mind is that I've created hundreds upon hundreds of these. And I wanna talk about the fact that it can even be that the original creator of this isn't the one that set it up to be a scam, although that's the most obvious way that it could be done. But let's say my system gets hacked. These hackers can go onto this web page right here and turn this into some malicious scam where if you click a button, it downloads spyware or adware, whatever it may be, onto my computer or my cell phone, right? Now, to show you how easy it would be to trick someone to clicking a malicious QR code, I can simply go to a metered parking spot and apply a sticker over the QR code that they have with the malicious one that I have. I can apply a sticker QR to wherever I want to. It could be, again, the Nike store. It could be a street sign. It could be at a music festival. It could be at your favorite restaurant. And the reason I bring up this park mobile example, well, it's because it's already been happening in real life. As you can see here, scammers are using park meter QR codes to rip you off. It says here that the scam relies on people's familiarity with pay the meter digital parking payments methods like the popular park mobile application. The scammers place their own QR codes on the meters, either pasting over the existing parking meter codes or placing their stickers on meters that never had digital payment methods to begin with. We've all parked our car in a hurry and simply scanned the parking meter QR code to go ahead and pay for it. Any one of us could have fell for the scam. So let me show you some ways that you can try to avoid it. So first of all, if you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna scan a QR code at your favorite company, make sure it's not a sticker that's been applied to the original sign. This is definitely gonna be a helpful way to prevent yourself from falling victim to this. And the most important tip that I could pass along is, okay, so here I have a printout of a flyer that I'm gonna use for an upcoming expo. And as you can see here, if I zoom in, on the QR code, you see how it says promoambitions.com? So before you click an actual QR code, it's really helpful for you to check that link and carefully look at the way it's spelled. Because remember, you don't want it to say like your bank account but misspelled or something like that. So if it said promoambitions with two A's or if it said like chase.com with two C's or something like that, you know that it's a fake and most likely a scam. I always check when I'm pointing at a QR code, I always carefully observe what that domain name is, and then I'll go ahead and click the URL. But without checking it, I will never click it first. So definitely a really serious recommendation for you guys to take into account. Again, I want to point out that I could easily create a flyer, paste it on your bank, and then when you click on it and you go to a certain web page, I can build this out. So for instance, like this is my website, Promo Ambitions, right? It's my company website. If I go over here to the artificial intelligence link, I can go and create any one of these pages to look identical to this. This would take me about, I would say, maybe an hour to an hour and a half to very accurately recreate this exact page on my website. And then what happens is you're gonna punch in your information and when you click login, it's gonna send me your login information. And that's not gonna be good for you because I'll be able to log in to your bank account. At the same time, if you go ahead and you fill out this information, a lot of times what hackers will do is when you click log in, it's not gonna say, ha ha, I got you, you fell for a giant scam. They don't wanna give it away like that. So what'll happen is if this is a fake website and you put in the login credentials and you click login, it will email it to me but after you click login, it will take you to this actual URL right here. And if you click it, it's just going to refresh like this and it'll be the actual tdbank.com. And you'll say, oh, huh, that was really weird. And then you'll go and you'll punch in your information and be like, that's glitchy. And then you'll be able to log in. And you will think that it wasn't a scam. It was just a glitch that the first time you clicked login and just reset because websites are glitchy. And so you won't even know that you went ahead and fell for a scam and sent the scammer or the hacker your personal login credentials 
to your bank account. This is all really important to know. If you guys found this video to be interesting, please mention it in the comment section of the video. Also, I was thinking of creating a video on all of the best antivirus and anti-malware software that's out there for all your devices. So for the computer, for your Mac devices, for your cell phones, if that's something you think you would be interested in and you want me to create, please mention it in the comment section. I appreciate you all for watching this video in its entirety, and I will see all of you hopefully in the next one. Scam you later, alligator. Yeah.